Thank you, Bridge, and welcome. Great to have you here. Hi there. Hi. I'm very glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet you too. Good. Well, we're going to have a conversation about anything that that arises, anything that uh, that comes up to you, anything that you want to talk about. And we're going to just see what happens in our conversation. Sounds good to me. I'm not usually very talkative. Uh So, I mean, I like to talk once I get more comfortable, but uh, I always feel awkward trying to start a conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, that was pretty brave to to uh, volunteer for this conversation with somebody you don't know. I mean, to get anywhere, you got to do at least one thing that makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> well, this one thing is worth at least five, I think. You get a lot of credit for that. I mean, I trust Zach, and I trust the other people in the community, so... Hmm. Yes. So you're not meeting a stranger. You're just meeting someone else in the family in a way, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sort of sort of like that. That's yeah. actually almost exactly what I've come to view this as. Uh-huh. That this virtual community is like a family. Mm-hmm. I met a lot of great people that I never would have met before, and I've met people that made me realize a lot of things that I thought I needed to change, I really didn't, so. Wow. What an insight that the things you thought you needed to change, you didn't. You were getting support for being you. Yeah. That's something I'm still working on as well, is just understanding that I can't do or I can do what I set out to do and not everything is um, lost the word Hmm. had it and I lost it yeah it will come back I'll say that part back while you're thinking of that word that you you found that you can do what you want to do and that everything doesn't have to be oh like um I don't have to have a plan that's like set in stone Mm -hmm. so I always I grew up with a really strict dad and he wanted me to be a lot of things that I I physically could not be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I spent I spent a lot of time thinking about my life through what I couldn't do or what I can't be. Mm. So and that that was the whole sort of beginning phase of feeling like your dad wanted you to be what you couldn't be and you were emphasizing what you couldn't be. Yeah. And then this feeling that you you brought tonight is a new feeling, like you can do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be all laid out in stone and ordered ahead of time. And Is that right? Yeah. He wanted me to be a lot more like him. Mm-hmm. He wanted me to be an engineer. He uh-huh. wanted fun. Uh-huh. And I'm not good at math, and <laughs> I'm not a son. Uh-huh. So, and he forced me into a lot of sports. He tried to get me to like basketball and baseball and uh-huh. 
And I'm not, not a... <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. He wasn't paying attention to who you are and your potential and your desire and what turns you on. He wanted you to be like him. And then that gave you the feeling like, well, you just, everything was about what you couldn't do. But then how did you get to this feeling of you you can do what you want to do? I had a lot of times in high school where I tried to break away from that feeling. Mm -hmm. I was in a peer mediation class that was a lot less mediating and more everyone just sat and talked about stuff that mm. was going on in our lives. And it was like one big group therapy session. Yeah, it sounds like a good class. It was. I took it for Very alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this last year, I've sort of stumbled into, stumbled into a lot of my passions that have made me realize a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I stumbled into teaching by helping uh, new language learners in high school practice their English grammar. I stumbled mm -hmm. into uh, writing because I just was tired of reading the same book over and over. I stumbled into podcasting because mm -hmm. I got hooked on a show. Really? <laughs> yeah. And now I'm sort of taking all those passions and they're like combining and I'm meeting a whole group of new people <laughs> who are so kind. Mm -hmm. Like Zach. Yeah. Like and Zach. This community, yes. Wow, what an exciting, what an exciting development that you that you stumbled into these things. Podcasts, writing, teaching. Yeah. And they're all intertwined. And they led you to this intertwined passions that have introduced you to a whole different kind of people that, that aren't wanting you to be something you can't be like your dad mm -hmm. does, but, but support you and want you to be what you want to be. I just, I've met a lot of really great people in the last few years that have really changed the course of my life in a way where I literally cannot imagine where I would be without them. Mm. It, it's wonderful to hear that and to see how delighted you are about it. And it, it seems like um, that stumbling into these passions helped you meet these people, and meeting these people really supports the passions, that it sort of goes both ways. You can only really get stronger from there. Yeah. But there, I, I have the feeling that there must have been something that, um, that you were or did to make this stumble. When I was having a really tough time. I was really depressed. Mm -hmm. And I... I didn't cut myself, but I almost got to that point. Mm. And it was then where I tried to just, like, stop thinking about things and just start doing them, which is what led me to helping out anywhere I could in school, which is how I started helping out the English language learners with their grammar, because I wanted something to just get my mind off of me. Oh, wow. God, I'm so struck by that, that, that in this depressed place and the, the place that would almost cut you, you know, the place that felt destructive, that you made some kind of 
turnabout of saying, well, I'm just going to, this thinking about me isn't going anywhere. I'm going to just give doing a chance. And the things that you did were such connection-making things. It took so much strength, I think, to do that. It's, I still have trouble thinking about that. Mm-hmm. That was the, the really low down point. Yeah. And it's hard to even stand touching that thinking about that. It's really like years have gone by, but it if I think too hard, it's like nothing's changed. So I have to just take a deep breath and remember mm, I'm taking a deep breath as you say that, yes. This time and I'm not that person anymore. It, it seems like it's not just thinking too much, but thinking in a certain way that brings you back there and scares you. And then you need that big breath and remembering that you are safe, you are here in this space in your life, not back there. But it seems like it's a particular kind of thinking that you were doing then that you could do now that says nothing's changed and what is that kind of thinking? It's, I spent so long thinking that way that it became second nature back then Mm. and so I'm still bad habits and all that and I'm still trying to shake that off is it is it right to say the thinking was this thinking that you can't do the things that you can't be what you're what your father wants you to be, that the kind of thinking that says things don't change and I'm not good enough or I'm not okay, right? It's, it's, I mean, those are very crude words. See if you could say more what it's like, what that thinking is. It's like some kind of message a message that hurts you. Yeah. Dour, very cold thoughts towards myself. Very cold thoughts toward yourself. If if I had been if I had seen one of my friends back then acting the way I remember acting, mm-hmm. I would have been terrified for them. I would have been there for them if they mm. said anything. And I just think back and remember that when I was in that place, I did nothing. It, it's like you uh, you got to this <clears throat> this bottomed out place where you would almost want to cut yourself. You did want to cut yourself, even though you didn't do it. And that bottomed out place said, we have to change course here. You know, this isn't working. And then you turned off those thoughts that hurt you and decided to reach into the world and do something to change the channel, to change 
And now it's hard to even go back to say, well, it was some message that was very hurtful and destructive that really overwhelmed you. When, when you say, well, you, you didn't, um, I forget what you said, you said something about how you didn't um, change it or something. But, but the, the sense that I got was that these cold thoughts toward yourself that, that had to do with your dad being disappointed that you weren't him, right? That, that those thoughts just overwhelmed you. You, there you were just sort of drowning in those thoughts. You sort of reached out from this place of being overwhelmed. It's an amazing story, Bridge, that you... I know it is, but because it's mine, it doesn't feel amazing. I haven't gotten to a place where I can fully accept or Mm. maybe even Mm. realize that I I have fully left that. I haven't gotten to a place where I can look back and think, yeah, that was bad, but I'm not that anymore because I still have moments where where I feel that start to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those messages are still a part of you, right? That Those struggles that we have never really go away. We just have a different relationship with them. It's not like we ever get rid of anything. Everything is always there with us, right? But we can make a different relationship with them, which is what's amazing that you but I want to I want to say that part back that you can't yet and I love the way you said yet because there's an intention that you would be able to right can't yet see how amazing you are and one thing that's in the way is that you know that those thoughts are still there sometimes, that those doubts, those feelings, those cold feelings toward yourself aren't gone, and you have a different relationship to them, and you have a bigger self. It was like, I see you, my image is that you were crouched there under the weight of the disappointment of your dad that then was disappointment in yourself and just like like all these bricks over you and and just flattened by all of that and then you said well you know the hell with this I'm gonna I'm not gonna stay here I'm gonna reach the something and start teaching and make a different doing and And you were able to sort of stand up and make a new community that wasn't disappointed in you, that was enjoying your you and your passions. But that little one that's crouched there under the weight of disappointment, that one hasn't gone away. It's just that there's a much bigger, expansive you also. Does, uh, does that image seem right to you? I, I'm not sure it'll ever go away. It's just a process yeah. of... And this is a conversation I had with Zach a while ago that I keep reminding myself of, but it's a process of realizing it's still there and not pushing it away like right. I did in high school, which right. just caused it to get bigger and more problematic 
but learning to accept it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and sometimes when we think of that, those parts of ourselves as as having a life, that little one that's crouched and overwhelmed with disappointment, that she's never going to go away. We don't want to send her away. But there's a kind of acceptance, a kind of making a relationship with her, a kind of um, letting her be part of the family. Yeah. Does does that sound? Mm-hmm. Right. I, it does. I'm just kind of absorbing all the information. Let's see how you would say that because it's more important. Your words are more important here about what that acceptance is like. Be like. I, one of the ways I explained it was like, like you've got a mirror image of yourself, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's easier to just flip the mirror over and pretend it's not there. Ah, uh, yes. But it's still there. It's just not facing you anymore. Yes, you know? yes, That's yes. No one else sees. Mm -hmm. But if you like look at the mirror image of yourself mm -hmm. and be like, this is me mm -hmm. back then, but it's also still me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now in a way. Right. Mm -hmm. But also, this will be me in the future when I've changed even more than mm -hmm. I have now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm making any sense. <laughs> oh, that made perfect sense to me that instead of uh, turning the mirror away and disowning it it's sort of like saying well this is was me and it's still a part of me and it will be a part of me and uh, I can look at that I can turn it toward me I'm, I can stand it I can be with it I can keep it company Well, thank you. That was a beautiful image, and that seems like a good place to end our conversation for tonight. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay, bye-bye now. I'm going to give you back to Zach. All right. Thank you so much for coming on, Bridge. Really awesome to, to have you here. It was a pleasure as always. Until next time. <laughs> See ya. Bye-bye.